qualifying for the National Finals Rodeo is the dream of every pro rodeo cowboy and cowgirl. Since 1985, the best have ended the season under the bright lights of Las Vegas. The NFR brings the top 15 cowboys and cowgirls together, all aiming for the gold buckle at the Thomas and Mack Center. For 10 days, bareback riders, steer wrestlers, team ropers, saddle bronc riders, tie-down ropers, barrel racers, and bull riders chase round wins, average titles, and world championships. As the chutes were ready and anticipation mounted, the stage was set for 10 of the most action-packed nights in all of professional sports. When the 65th finals kicked off, the arena was buzzing with stories waiting to be written. This is the NFR. This is the big one. To the 3,000 professional members of the Rodeo Cowboys Association and the millions of rodeo fans around the world, this is the National Finals Rodeo. The number one contender for the title, Casey Tibb. Now is the time. Keep your eye on this cowboy, Larry Mahan. Already placed on this third, let's say, right here. To the left now, right to the right. Here we go, this big bull jumps, kicks, turns back, ties right there. Damning Kent performance. You stay there, Billy! He, he made it work here, Mahler is out. Here's a big chance for Trevor tonight. A top round already, we've only seen a few runs, nothing over 14. You gotta be kidding me! At the start of the 2023 National Finals Rodeo, Vegas newcomer Dalton Massey held the top spot on the leaderboard as the favorite in the steer wrestling after an unprecedented regular season. Massey arrived in Las Vegas with $193,430, a PRCA regular season earnings record. He also held more than a $30,000 lead in the world standings. But after 12 runs, Don Payne and Ty Erickson stood atop the leaderboard with a pair of 4.3 second runs. Wags took things up a notch as the lucky 13th man out of the box. The back-to-back -back world champion is never out of the fight. 3.8 the, the 3.8 second run moved the Louisiana man to the top with two cowboys to go. When Massey backed into the box, Wagaspak still held the lead. Uh, Tyler Wagaspak is not the guy you want in your rear view mirror. Let's see if Massey can hold on to that lead. Let's go ahead, Dalton. Yes, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Massey made it clear his regular season was no fluke. He laid down a 3.5 second run, earning the 30 year old his first round win in Las Vegas and maintaining his spot atop the world standings. Massey's win extended his advantage over the rest of the world, but he didn't have as much luck in the next two rounds. The pair of Bulldoggers battled in the middle rounds, and Wagus back kept chipping away at the deficit. Wags tied for sixth in the second and third rounds, while Massey ended both rounds outside the money. Then Massey looked poised to hit his stride. In round four, Massey tied for fifth with a 4.6 second run. Dalton did a good job right there, other than just being behind the barrier. And in round five, he stopped the clock at four seconds. To finish fifth and tighten his grip atop the standings. Meanwhile, Wagus Pack had his two worst runs of the NFR and slipped to fourth in the world standings with five rounds to go. During the first ever matinee performance, Wagaspak got back on track. So here comes Wagaspak. Not the best call for him last night, trying to overcome a little bit of adversity here in round six. Yeah, and if there's anybody that could shake it off, it's this guy right here. You know, Joe and I were talking about it. When you win one championship, it's something. But when you win multiple, there's a little bit something different about you. And that difference is just forgetting about what happened the night before and going on with it.
four-second run earned Wags a share of third in the round and kept him in the chase. Massey, on the other hand, ran into trouble. Did he get out? No, I don't think I don't so. Either. I see the hands up over there. And, but you know what? You have to take chances. The 15.2 second finish kept him out of the money. But Massey still led the championship race by more than $35,000. Just a few hours later, Wagaspak kept the good times rolling with the first run of round seven. The four-time world champion applied pressure to the rest of the day sheet with a 3.8 second run to claim the early lead. Nothing bothers him. That's what he's so deadly. And you can see him right there, so patient, controlled. That's why he has four gold buckles. Stan Branco matched the time later in the night to share the round win with Wagaspak. That's a great run right there. Yeah. The golden performance reignited Wagaspak's title defense, bumping him to third in the world standings and fifth in the NFR average. Massey finished third in round seven, but after missing the money in the eighth and ninth go rounds, the world title race remained wide open. Surmounting a late comeback to win the NFR in round 10 isn't impossible, but it's exceedingly rare. You know this 10th round, there's always nerves no matter what position you're coming in. Wagus Pack sat fourth in the world standings ahead of the final performance, trailing Massey by nearly $40,000. Big payouts for round winners meant Wagus Pack had a shot to reclaim his title when he geared up for his final run. But he needed everything to go his way. The first thing he needed was to pass Nick Guy in the average. Oh, oh man. That is disaster. A mistake at the barrier and a runaway steer led to a no time for Guy and put a crack in the door for Wags. Wagus Pack also needed to pass J.D. Struxness, Stan Branco, and Massey in the world standings. J.D. Struxness needs one spot out of the average, but he's number two in the world. He still thinks he has a chance at this gold buckle race. Struxness recorded a 4.2 second run as the 12th man out to seize the number four spot in the round with three Cowboys to go. Will Loomis led the round at 3.8 seconds when Wags readied his horse for one more go. Donald Wag is back trying to win three in a row. He came in fourth in the average, fourth in the world. We seen him last year kind of be the spoiler. Uh, this year might be a little bit different. Desperately needing a round win. Never count out a world champion. Steer might try a little too much. You see him spin it on him. Oh, here, guys. Holy cow. Wow, what a shot. Tyler Wag is back. Lightning striking for him in round number 10. Oh. The textbook run of 3.8 seconds matched Loomis at the top and kept Wagaspak's chances for a three-peat alive. Franco followed with a 6.6, .6, finishing outside the money. Just some tough luck for Stan. Dalton Massey closed the round and just needed a solid run to win the world in his first appearance at the Thomas and Mack. Massey fired out of the box, but broke the barrier for a second time. Ten second penalty left him on the outside looking in. Tenth round magic for Tyler Wagesback just continues to show up. And Tyler Wagesback earned his fifth PRCA Steer Wrestling World Championship.